Ball. We appreciate that fine music. That's uh, really beautiful. We welcome you to the dedication of the fountain, the tenor uh, fountain. We appreciate your attendance. We have uh, a short program that we'll present to you. But first of all, I'd like to just briefly talk about, uh, give you a little bit of background of how long this fountain has taken. Uh, we have uh, planned on this fountain for a number of years. Uh, originally, I think it's almost 10 years ago that Mr. Tanner contributed a substantial amount of money uh, for building a fountain. And that went through uh, several phases and a couple of different presidents. And for some reason, it was put on the back burner until about a year and a half ago when we decided that this was for real and that we really wanted to have a fountain. So we organized another committee and the committee uh, met often, had a lot of real good ideas and all of these ideas were put together as we met with Boyd Blackner, the architect. And he had quite a challenge because we had a challenge as a committee to accomplish two objectives. Uh, the first objective was to really decide on a location, where we wanted the fountain to be located. And we looked at several locations throughout the campus. We looked in front of the administration building so that the possibility of people seeing it as they drove by in the cars. We looked at other places around the campus, but we really felt that we wanted it to be the central focal point of the campus, something that would be a participatory fountain that students would be drawn to. And in the short time that we've had it in operation, it's truly met those objectives. It's been something that the students gather often between classes and in another 10 minutes or so, the, the class will let out at 20 after 12. And you'll see this quad just kind of uh, become real busy because it's between classes and a lot of students congregate during that time. We appreciate all of the committee members who were very creative in the ideas that they had. They spent a lot of time giving lots of suggestions. As I mentioned, we wanted it to be a participatory type fountain where students would congregate. We wanted to have seating so that they could congregate and sit and, and talk. We wanted to have lights and so the, the fountain is interior lit so that in the evening it's really beautiful. We wanted it to be attractive with landscaping and Brent Morris who is our landscape architect is still uh, in the process of developing some additional uh, landscape for the rest of the quad to <coughs> complement uh, the fountain in the central area. We want to give a special thanks to uh, Boyd Blackner who is the architect, to Roland Blosch who is the builder, the contractor, and all the subcontractors. I mentioned Brent Morris, the landscape architect, and for the various people at uh, the DFCM, uh, the Department of Facilities, Construction and Management, uh, Einar Johnson was the architect that coordinated those efforts. We want to thank all of those that had anything to do with the building of the fountain because we really appreciate all of the efforts and we're very proud of, uh, of the fountain as it stands. We have a program today of which I'll outline. We have Gary Carpenter, who is the student body president, who will speak to us. And then we'll hear from President Carnahan. We'll hear a, a number from the Bonneville String Quartet. Then we'll hear from the Commissioner of Higher Education, Dr. Rolf Kerr. And then we'd like some comments from Dr. O.C. Tanner. And we'll then gather uh, 
in the proper room for some refreshments uh, at the conclusion of this ceremony. So Gary Carpenter, the student body president. As students of Utah Technical College, we are grateful to Dr. Tanner for the beautiful addition to our college. This fountain introduces an attractive area to the center of the campus. The geometric design and the symmetric uh, pattern creates a picturesque setting. The fountain not only adds beauty to the quad, but it also provides a peaceful atmosphere where the students can sit to enjoy nature. During the summer, the area around the fountain is a, re a relaxing retreat from the classroom. Students can listen to the quiet rustling of water and bask in the summer sun. Because the fountain is located in the center of the quad, it is the focal point where activities can be held. For example, the first week of school, a Western band used the fountain area to perform for the students. As the students walked from the building to building, they were able to take part in this activity. Although the purpose of the fountain is to, is to provide beauty to the campus, there is another benefit that has been discovered. One of the blind students reported that because of the rustling of, of the fountain and the water in the fountain, it's easy to become familiar with the campus and to know where the different buildings are located. Again, we, as the student body of UTC, thank Dr. Tanner for his generosity expressed in the donation of this fountain to beautify our campus and to provide a service to our handicapped students. Thank you. This is a great day for Utah Technical College at Salt Lake. Any project takes a great deal of planning and effort to accomplish, and this fountain is no exception. As Brent indicated, it's the culmination of several years of effort. We're we were determined to have a fountain that was beautiful and that fit well with the architecture and the setting of our campus, but we also wanted a fountain that reflected the role of this college. We are a technical college with instructional programs ranging from the most basic vocational courses to the most advanced technical ones in this world of high technology. But in addition, we are increasingly developing general education classes in communication skills, math skills, and in courses ranging across economic, political, and social aspects of our society. It used to be that vocational and technical schools were concerned only with providing a student with specific vocational and technical skills and knowledge to do a particular job. This has changed over the years, and in recent years, the college has begun offering classes, more classes, to give a student a broadened education. We are being asked by business and industry, as well as by students, to include a greater awareness and understanding of the world in which the student will live and work, in addition to the social and communication skills necessary in today's marketplace. Our vocational and technical students are also wanting to have increased, aspect, increased access to more aspects of what is commonly called a liberal education or a liberal arts education. Because of our primary charge, because our primary charge is still the vocational and technical kinds of education, many of our efforts to provide students with a greater understanding and appreciation of the arts is done through student clubs and organizations and in providing more things on campus for them to see, hear, and enjoy. As part of that effort, we have decided to acquire some paintings some sculpture, and now this beautiful and artistic fountain. Fountains have been an important feature of cities, gardens, college campuses, and private houses throughout history. 
The artificial harnessing of water power dates back to the first Egyptian and Babylonian civilization. The ancient Greeks regarded fountains as sacred sources of life. <coughs> water was put to ingenious uses in Western Europe during the Middle Ages. The Fontana Maggiore, built in 1278 in Italy, was the first to exploit the now familiar decorative effect of water cascading from a central spout that beautifully exploited the movement and sounds of the water. Oriental and Indian fountain builders used water to induce calm contemplation. Their European counterparts have generally been more attracted by the theatrical effects of jets and cascades. In Utah, the name O.C. Tanner is synonymous with fountains, as well as with many other aspects of art and beauty. I constantly receive compliments about the fountain. Each fountain has a personality of its own. This one we feel is the most beautiful of the Tanner fountains. That's totally unbiased. <laughs> It is a fountain of singular beauty, a blend of the modern technologies of glass and steel, coupled with the ageless forces of electricity and water. With the completion of this fountain, Mr. Tanner has given our college a centerpiece of beauty that is already being enjoyed, as Gary mentioned. It's a place of contemplation and a place of sharing, both friendships and learning. I wish to express my appreciation, our appreciation, to Boyd Blackner as well, as architect of the fountain. It was his artistic vision and engineering skills, combined with Mr. Tanner's interest and commitment, that has made this beautiful fountain possible. I also wish to express, express appreciation to Brent Goodfellow and his committee and all of those staff members here at the college who committed so much time and, and effort to making this fountain what it is today. So on behalf of the college, I express our deepest appreciation to Mr. Tanner for this fountain and for his other, other benefactors. Thank you.
for me to be here today and to participate in this marvelous event. This world has been blessed over the years with truly outstanding people. But through the generations, occasionally there are those few who emerge who really make a difference. Now, Obert C. Tanner is one who has emerged in our generation who has truly made a difference. I don't know when, Dr. Tanner, you developed your commitment to beauty, but I think it would be safe to say it at least began when you selected your beautiful wife. <laughs> and I'm assuming that she is the source of your inspiration and your commitment to beauty because it has been so much a part of your life and you have made beauty a part of the lives of so many people down through the years. Now I personally have had opportunity to benefit from his commitment to beauty as expressed in fountains, both at Dixie College where I was greeted several years ago there on my arrival to what I consider to be at least a rival to this the most beautiful of the fountains. I also had the privilege of another expression of beauty in terms of the Tanner's commitment. 
And that is in the amphitheater down adjacent to Zions National Park. If any of you have been there, you will surely know that that great facility, that beautiful facility, is there only as a result of the commitment to beauty which the Tanners have. Now, while we are here to focus on a beautiful fountain and to express appreciation to the Tanners and to honor them, I'm sure that the Tanners would feel somewhat less than fully fulfilled if we just looked at the fountain and just looked at them. Somehow it seems to me that our view ought to be to that deeper and more extensive view of beauty itself. I would imagine that the Tanners would be very supportive of a phrase taken from the creed of John D. Rockefeller, where he said, I believe in the dignity of work, whether by head or by hand. And it seems to me that your commitment, Dr. Tanner, has been to not only the beauty that can be produced by the hand, but also the beauty of the mind. I had the privilege, as a fairly young man, being asked to use a book that was written by Dr. Tanner to teach a group of my peers. One of the chapters in that book is entitled Beauty. Could I read two paragraphs which Dr. Tanner included in that chapter on beauty? He said, God is the author of beauty as he is of truth and goodness. Beauty is a revelation of him. It has ever been the claim of religion and art that science is not the only highway to truth. A world that holds so much beauty shows boundless evidence of God's handiwork. And then he quoted from Socrates, the great exemplar and teacher of beauty in the life from within. Socrates said, as quoted by Dr. Tanner, Beloved God of woods and streams, grant us to be beautiful in the inner man, and all we have of outer things to be at peace with those within, counting only the wise to be truly rich, increase to all who are here, abide their store of gold. Well, I believe it is that kind of commitment to both the beauty of the hand and the beauty of the mind that in fact does bring us here today. And that our real tribute must be not to a wonderful couple who have made this fountain possible, but a tribute to individuals who through contributions all over the state and elsewhere, through fountains, through books, through lectureships, through lists which go on and on, have contributed to our overall sense of beauty. And it is to that sense that I personally, and I believe we collectively pay tribute today for that contribution which you have made to our lives. Our deep and sincere, sincere thanks to Dr. Obert C. Tanner and his beautiful wife, Grace. I want to first say thank you, then a sober thought I might express, and finally a word of romance. I want to thank President Carnahan and the Commissioner, sir, for your kind words. And I want to thank the people who built this fountain, the architect who designed it, and the contractor who's sitting on the front row, and he isn't up here having all the honor he should have, but you did build it, and there were others who landscaped and who and I have a love of labor and appreciation for those who do that. My next thought is something of a serious thought. They asked me what I would say in a plaque or something here, and I put together three lines with four words in each line. First line we, uh, I wrote, 
all life is problem solving. The second line, a skill can help. There's a lot of problems go around the economic well-being of anybody. The third line, and beauty adds joy. Now my last thought is a little bit romantic and I'd like all of you to try with me to use your imagination about what this place will be. We'll disappear in a few minutes, some of us will return, some of us may never. But in your imagination, think of how many people will come here and enjoy this conference. It's almost unbelievable that time and space this mean will mean so much. I've never been quite so choked up as that a blind man found his directions on this campus by the way the water gives him the sound. Now, in that imagination, can you see some young people this thing and then maybe holding hands and saying meet you at the fountain <laughs> and that's where I met my wife the fountain was a drinking fountain but it was a place, <laughs> but it was a place where she knew and I knew where we were going to meet and that was well over a half century ago. I'm glad that you mentioned her. We get so we look after each other more and more as years go by and I'm honored that she is here and being honored. And I want to thank the officials of this school and the state in, in, in essence and substance. The giving and receiving, I have received more today than I have ever given. And there's nothing truer in life than this, that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Thank you.